can see it's not dark we've not been here long I think John's missed about four runs already and he's into an eel it's not the biggest but it's one of his first by design so uh, he's actually got it has he got it in the net no he will learn yeah uh, swam out <laughs> Your first deal. Well done, bud. So we're down at Mill Farm Fishery and John has missed four and we've only been here about half an hour. He's got his first deal by design. Nicely lip hooked, easily removed with a barbless hook using a twig wig, which I'll show you later. He's now turning it on her back and just tickling her tummy. And as you can see, they should go very quiet, but the smaller ones are really difficult to handle the big girls there, uh, you just turn them over, tickle their tummies and they uh, just give up. They are quick, picture about, or <laughs> maybe getting on for a couple of pounds, but we're going to get bigger tonight. As I say, it's uh, not even got dark yet, it's, we've got a few hours before it's dark and they're already feeding. So, well done John, PB. We'll get some Good, more. First Welcome one. to nice Mill one. Farm Fishery down in West Sussex, it's one of my favourite venues. You probably know it better for the British record Silver Bream that weighed three pound four ounces. Amazingly, I looked on the internet today, that was back in 2012. Uh, still doing a few big ones, but not to that sort of pedigree anymore, but they are coming on. I'm here for another reason, because this lake, or these three lakes, are full of eels, and I've been very kindly given permission to actually fish this tonight on a one-off for eels. Now, I have a passion for eels. I only get out a couple of times a year, and I fished this a few weeks ago and uh, I lost count of how many eels I had to over five pound. I'm joined with my good friend John Merriman next door who's uh, actually already caught his first ever eel by design using the twig rig and rollovers. I'm going back to old school because I've lent him some of my equipment. Um, I'm Xander fishing for eels by, uh, as you can see, but um, I've already missed a run. It's not dark yet. So uh, as I say, um, we're looking forward to uh, a night under the clouds which is very good uh, conditions for them hopefully a lot of anguilla anguilla will uh, grace our nets and we'll show them to you in the morning along with the rigs we've been using so i'm just going to run through the tackle you really need for eel fishing rods ideally need to be fairly powerful i'm using two pound barbel rods which i would say is slightly under gun especially if a big fish so john's got two two carp rods um, but I would say anything, you know, around two and a half pound test curve rods would be about, would be ideal. And then obviously you've got your reels loaded with 10 to 12 pound main line. And um, you obviously you've got your optonics, your alarms, and um, you've got Zandervan rollover. And John is going to actually just demonstrate when an eel takes. So... Um, when it actually takes the line, the rollover just comes up, clicks over, and then the actual line can just come off the actual spool freely. What that does is creates no resistance, and the next job is to actually either clamp your hand over that spool and strike, or in one nice clean motion, click the bail arm over, and then make a really fast, firm strike. So. Uh, pretty powerful tackle because eels do give you you know a big eel will will fight and uh, you'll certainly know it's on as for bait when you're actually fishing for eels my first choice would be to go in on one rod on lobworm and the other on some sort of fish dead bait some waters contain eels that have got small mouths so they're much more on a worm kind of um, feed on worms and if they're predators and they feed on fish their mouths actually change to a wider mouth. It's quite amazing what they can do. Um, so normally go in one on lobworm, one on fish bait, and just gauge what works best. Sometimes on the lobworm, especially on a venue like this, there's no way you're gonna cast lobworms out there. They're gonna be ripped to bits in minutes. So we know straight away they're out. And these fish in this lake are actually got wide mouths and their head shape even changes to become predators and, and feed on fish. And um, as I say, you need to read your rules before you come to a fishery. Don't turn up at this lake, start catching little fish and cutting them up. We were allowed to do it just to actually give you some idea of how to go about eel fishing on your lakes, but please read your rules 
this this lake rules is all fish must be returned to the water alive so uh, you're not going to be catching little ones and cutting them in half if you cannot use um, the fish you catch here then my advice is to buy some pre-packed vacuum packed fresh baits that's as good as you can get and then cut those up into little sections and actually use those if you are allowed to use um, little baits then I always go for you know fish about two inches long if preferred and cut them in half use the towel and use the head but ideally the head is the best because it's got all the blood in there it oozes out and it just uh, just seems to get more runs than the towel and also you seem to be able to strike out of the lips quicker than you can at the towel route so uh, Always experiment at the start, find out if they're big mouth or small, small mouth eels, whether they want worm or fish baits, and then just change everything accordingly. So I'm just going to show you how to handle a big eel and how to get them calmed down so you can take a photograph, or hopefully, it doesn't always the case, some venues they're really, really lively. But as you can see, she's quite calm there. What you want to do is just turn her up on her back, and what you're trying to do is to see the head and all the the gill flare up and they say it's, they're trying to get oxygen into their system and they can't so although you don't want to leave them like this for too long give them 30 seconds turn them over as you can see she's nice and calm I can run my hands down her body she doesn't mind that she probably quite likes that and then obviously when you're ready for a photograph get somebody there that's actually framed it up is there on repeat so you can take quite a few pictures at once and then literally try and just pick them up and get a picture she's not quite ready yet just turn her back down lay her down gills flaring up again give it a few seconds and to be perfectly honest there's no such thing as a perfect ill picture so um, once you've got one you know send them back into their watery home so let's have another go turn her over pick her up snap 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 somebody's just got three or four pictures from that and then we just do it one more time as you can see she's nice and calm get ready turn her over snap 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 the rig I'm actually using for my eel fishing now is called the snig twig rig and it's been designed to avoid deep hooking. Eels are in decline and we need to protect them. So the JS eel rig and long hook links like that are now out of the door and a lot more people are using bolt rigs or um, what's known as the T rig just to try and avoid the deep hooking. And it's fairly simple. It consists of, I use a one and a half ounce running lead on a run ring just to reduce the resistance. Uh, that comes down and is comes against a uh, quick change bead these are really strong and then I've got about I don't know 12 inches of an abrasion resistant uh, braid and uh, some people use wire but I don't have any problems using braid I use the Nash combi link and I just strip it back and it's really abrasion resistant so I can put it in my teeth and it hardly marks it but what I would just say is uh, I've never lost an eel that's bitten off through this but just check it after every eel because they have little teeth and they do kind of cause a few uh, little cuts in it and basically just change it if needed and then what it is is positioned about half an inch away from the size six fang twister and that's barbless very important always use barbless hooks so if you do deep hook and I'm you can you know at least they can get that out but um, a tiny little twig there just a bit of shrink tubing and when an eel takes it it comes up against that and then you're striking and it's not going to be deep hooked and again as you can see I've got a very small fish head I always find heads are much better if you're allowed to use them and um, just a little bit of elastic band on there just to secure that so fairly simple fairly robust and um, you know taking fish safety into so we don't deep hook those eels. You can see here's John with his personal best three pound ten ounce eel. He had a couple that size. Yep. There they are. Lovely.
take a couple of pictures. Lovely. Well, this might look like a phenomenal catch of eels, but it could have been so much more, <laughs> oh, couldn't yes. it? Oh yes, yeah. We, uh, we missed far, far more bites than we've actually hooked. It's just been one of those frustrating nights, but John's first night for eels, yeah. you had fun? Yeah. I had a great night. Duncan Blank, this was me. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. <laughs> Although you did have more than me. Uh, yeah, no, it was great. First time ever, Duncan. Thanks for inviting me. Um, great night, learnt a lot. Um, personal lot. best, three pound ten. Personal best, three ten. So yeah. I think you, we've got about, I don't know, about, it's only about ten there, so you can imagine a few weeks ago when, <laughs> when uh, me and my mate Chris had about 40 between us. So, um, as you can see, whoop, they're a bit lively. They want to get out, but um, fantastic evening down here at Mill Farm Fishery in, <laughs> in West Sussex. I had a kind invitation from Adrian down at Mill Farm to come and join Duncan for an eel session. Uh, I said to Duncan, if I can beat my PB and get one over four pound, I'll be very happy. And this one was four pound 15, and the one on the mat was four pound two, or four pound three and uh, had them both on the twig rig, had a couple of smaller ones as well. Um, it's been a busy night, but thoroughly enjoyable. You watch, they just disappear into the murky depths. Oh, other way.